Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the cog dropdown and just note that our setup process is over here in the company area. So whenever we're dealing with our, our settings in our accounts, we got under the company area, account settings, manage users, uh, customize your styles and so on. We're gonna go into the account and setting right now. Most, most of this stuff, a lot of it has been set up when we started the company file. But let's just first look at the company information up top and then we'll go into some of more of these items in future presentations. So the company name, notice you got the pencil over here. If you click on it, then you can make adjustments to it. You might have a logo that you would add. Now I haven't optimized the size or anything, but I just picked up a logo. So there's the, you know, just to show that you can have a picture, you can, you can get into the optimization to make sure that you're, you're picking up the size and shape that will be most appropriate. The logo is going to possibly appear on the types of forms if you were to customize them that you give to clients, major forms being the invoice form or estimate forms. And then your company name uh, showing on sales forms and purchase orders. So I'm just gonna type in get uh, great guitars. And so this would be the, the name that you want to be showing up because that's gonna be important on those types of forms that you're gonna be providing to customers. So it shows on the sales forms invoices, sales receipts, purchase forms, like a bill. So legal name, if it's the same, it would be here, or you can uncheck that if it's not. The EIN number represents your tax identification number. Even if you're a sole proprietorship, then you typically want to have oftentimes an EIN still, even if you don't have any employees, because that's the number that you might have to provide to people if they need your business number. Say if you do contracting, for another company, they're gonna need your number and you would rather not give them your social security number, some kind of EIN number. So we'll just say 95-... is usually kind of like the format of the EIN. So obviously I just kind of made that up, but that's the, that's the idea. So I'm gonna save that. And then we've got the company type. So it's gonna be a sole proprietorship. This is something that we set up when we set up the company file, notice that you can change it uh, here, sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, not-for-profit, and so on. Uh, you would think this would have that an impact on the, on the chart of accounts, but you can see that it didn't really have a big impact on uh, the chart of accounts as we changed it when QuickBooks made the chart of accounts. So we'll take a look at that later. And then we've got the industry. So we picked the industry when we set up the company file. And then down here, we've got the contact information, which includes uh, the email address, address, same as the company email. You might have a f the phone number that you would want to add here. So I'm going to say 555-5555. And that could show up on uh, some forms. So f we'll do that. And then uh, the website, again, which is uh, showing on the sales forms. So if you want your website, you know, W www.getgreatguitars.com or something like that that will show up on your sales forms uh, that will be external users you can populate that so i'm going to say save it then we've got the company address notice i just picked up an address i searched for a house in beverly hills that sells for like multiple million dollars or something if you're in the market and i'm just going to use that as my location so you can use that if you want uh, 71 Beverly Hills, California, 90210, uh, address where your company is based. This address is used to calculate applicable taxes for your QBO subscriptions and is your default company address. Meaning it's important because if you have shipping information, it'll be important there. But also if you have sales tax that you have to deal with, then the sales tax in the United States is not a federal tax, but based on state and local information and then it's gonna be necessary to have a, a, an address for QuickBooks to populate that. And then you've got your address, uh, you've got your customer facing address. I'm gonna say that's the same. You might have a different address, for example. You could, you could have a different address if you need to there. And then the address, the legal address, typically I'm gonna say the same. I'm gonna say the same here again. You could change it if you had a different address that you wanted to be populated there. And then communicate with Intuit and if you go here, it'll link you basically to your account 
with Intuit. So that's the general overview for these settings. We'll go into more of these items uh, in a future presentation. I'm gonna close this back out for now.